Hello, my name is Michael Highsmith. I own the Rainier Great Western HO Scale Model Railroad. We're a freelance railroad that follows old abandoned Milwaukee track in western Washington from Black River Junction and Renton to Pasco. Today we're going to talk about one of the construction projects we put together on the railroad and this video will be addressing building the helix. We hope you enjoy it. Here's our track plan of the staging level and as you can see the helix is located on the northwest corner of part of the benchwork we call the island. It enters at 22 inches off the floor from staging. It circumnavigates six full turns and exits at about 50 inches off the floor to the upper track plan, which you'll see here in a second. And it merges on the north side of the backdrop with that upper level. Let's talk about our list of materials. We needed three sheets of quarter inch plywood. They create what we call a tile. You'll see how we cut them in the shape later on. A box of single sheet wax paper, that's to keep in the glue from getting where it doesn't belong. Three eighths inch wood screws. You can use any bit you choose for that. Two drills, with one being a countersink, the other being the driver of choice. Glue, white or yellow, doesn't matter, and paint brushes to spread the glue. Paper towels for spills, cool water for the same. Threaded rod, we used 5 16 inch washers and bolts to make sure that we can set the grade and also stiffen up the entire structure. Quarter inch sheet cork for roadbed. Flex track, we used Atlas, and of course, enough buddies to get the job done. The night before everybody arrived, I followed the old adage, a place for everything and everything in its place. Each one of the two buckets has a completely separate piece of plywood. We did that so that we didn't intermix the two to avoid any possibility of uh, dimensional thickness being a problem. The other thing I'd like you to notice is the tape on the floor. The circular reference is the outer edge of the helix. This is the key to the entire design. Our wood tiles are essentially a design created by Bruce Carpenter from the Chillicothe Sub Model Railroad. The 8 and 3 sixteenths came from him. We decided how wide we wanted it. And the 7.1 degree angle, which is actually the corresponding angle in this case, was determined through some trial and error. I want to thank Bruce for all of his advice on putting this together. You should check out his website, which will be in the commentary below. So here's the layout. The key are the red lines because they were the outside edge of the table and we couldn't be any wider than that. And the two inside corresponding were the width of an entire tile. The goal when we tried to determine the 7.1 degrees was to follow this outer edge. If we could get that to work we knew we had the right angle. We just did trial and error. The real solution to this whole process is what we called the sandwich. You had two pieces of plywood on the bottom and sandwiched with two pieces on the top. Adhered to each other with glue and screws. As you can see one of the things that we had to do was we staggered it. That gave it the rigidity that we needed. In this case the yellow line marks where this particular tile corresponded and then the red was kind of ideal would be in the center of the tiles. We found that as we went around the circle that desire got a little bit less than what we'd ultimately had hoped for but it didn't matter in the end. Here the guys started to arrive on Saturday morning about 8 o'clock. We didn't know how long it was going to take so we just booked basically the entire day for everybody. Trying to fit eight guys in that thing was real interesting. Here's the most important part, surprisingly enough, for the two glue guys, because without them and having the guy preset the tiles on the floor and put in the wax paper, the guys on the floor doing all the hard work really wouldn't have been able to get their job done. So I thank Bill and Ed for doing that. That's a tedious, no thank job. Here you've got Scott and uh, doing countersink and Wayne doing the, uh, the drilling. The most important part, though, is 
Ken because he's got the glasses and the green shirt. If he doesn't keep those tiles aligned, well, we're in a big mess of hurt. You drill the holes through the cork, so that means taking them apart. Well, oh, I see what you're saying. As you can see, it gets to be quite the choreographed yeah. event with yeah. tiles coming in, tiles being placed, countersink, four sc screw holes, and Wayne coming back with four more screws. The goal in every case was to keep the outer edge of the tiles along the circle. The inner edge didn't matter. We really had to make sure that we were square, or in this case, cylindrical, on the outer edge because we couldn't impact any of our walkway. That would have been catastrophic. There was lots of banter between all the guys in the room over different ideas, things that might be done better, more efficiently. Uh, you know, there was including a little bit of uh, extracurriculars, which hopefully I've edited out most of those. <laughs> we had a few of those, needless to say, with all these different things going on. One thing we tried to make sure of was that we built this in sections. So the transition from one level to the next was very, very carefully planned. Here I'm working with Wayne on that discussion. You can see in this picture, the wax paper is actually up over the next level. That's to make sure we don't get anything in there between the seams. And we have to stagger and essentially skip one full tile and then start over so that we can make it all work. The guys did a tremendous job. I mean, this is kind of a bizarre event. Everybody going around in circles time after time after time to do all six of these levels and then stopping in between each level in order to kind of regroup, think about the transition to the next level and so on. Let me just tell you that if you think you've seen this before, you probably have. The difference, of course, is that now we're on another level versus the last time you saw this. I'm just throwing these in there so that you can see this is just a repetitive process. That's everybody was doing their job over and over and over again. Just worry about the outside edge, Ken. Don't worry about the inside at all. Just the outside edge flush. I cut them all so that the outsides should match. This little segment in here is kind of intriguing to me because it's probably the only time in the entire build that we actually got off center and fortunately we caught it in the sense that somebody realized we were getting too narrow and getting off center so we had to actually go back and unscrew things in order to make them all work. As you'll see here in a moment, they realize that they're getting off kilter. And so while they put these screws and the countersinks in, they go, uh, yeah, wait a minute, that's not going to work. There you go. See, we're like, oh, that we're off kilter. So they got to go back in, take out the screws, redrill the countersinks. You don't want to use the same hole over again. We want a nice, tight fit here. 
very critical. So we redrilled the holes, refilled the screws, and went forward with the process just like all the other times. Well, from this point forward, I think you can probably get the general idea of how this works. So I won't bore you with lots more guys going around in circles and looking at the back of Ken's head. But nonetheless, you get the idea that this was very choreographed and it worked perfectly. Each guy knew his task and each guy followed it to the T. I'm very proud of everybody and very thankful for their efforts because frankly, there's no prayer one guy could do this. Here are just some general shots in between layers. Like I said before, you can see just above the cord. Uh, here's uh, Bill laying down wax paper. Here we have the guys talking about the transition, how we wanted to handle it in this particular case. Here we're using our radius guide, 28 and a half inch down the center. In this shot, you've got one of our lower levels already having had the cork put on it. This was the advantage of building the whole helix in sections. You can see the others are laid on top of each other in the lower left of this screen. This worked great. Gave us time to put everything in the way we wanted and put it all back together again. Here Doug and Wayne are talking to each other and working on laying track. You can see we laid the track. We had to leave it open until we brought in the next section. Here are the guys laying down the next section on top of the pre-built one. And in the end, here are the guys We've laying it all out with all six sections. Then we used actually pieces of the tile to set it all up, make sure it would look good. We tied in the electrical so that the track had its power. And then we came back in and started drilling down the center, not on the left side or the right side, but right down the center for our threaded rods. And here Doug and I are working on adding an unexpected need for a rod. As you can see, we thought we could get around with eight rods, but we ended up needing about 10 in order to keep the grade at the 2% level we wanted. This may look like a simple process, but let me just tell you that getting the drill on there is probably the easiest part. After that, in order to put this new rod in, we had to make sure that all the washers and bolts were in their proper order and then as I squeeze the trigger, that rotates the rod down through each individual layer of the helix. But ultimately it requires one heck of a lot of hands in order to make this work. Because each level has to have a pair of hands or at least a hand in order to hold the bolts steady so that while the rod is spinning, the bolts don't tighten up. If you make that mistake and lose track of one, trust me, they wire themselves together so hard it's almost impossible to get them apart. Don't do that to yourself. Here we are near the bottom. You can see the two by four under the cross member. That's where we're targeting. That's gonna hold it at the bottom. Provide yet another anchor into the base for the entire helix structure. But you gotta remember, those bolts and washers have got to be readjusted every time because otherwise they'll ratchet themselves together and are bugger to get undone later on so just don't do that to yourself as I said before you can't have enough hands to do this basically you've got three guys each using both hands to hold a different level 
Meanwhile, Doug's making the adjustments at the final level so that we can actually drive the rod down through, and you'll see it going down right under his fingers and down through. And eventually you'll see it pop out down under the 2x4. Here you'll see it pop out below. Then it was just a question of anchoring everything together like these pictures. Tightening up the bolts, making sure that the washers were right down the center. And frankly, that's a point of discussion. A lot of people say we needed to anchor outside and inside. We didn't. We went right down the center, had absolutely no issues. In this picture, you can see the laser level we used to make sure we were at 2% grade. And of course, when we're done, the boys had a little bit of fun. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my crew. Also, a special thank you to Bruce Carpenter for his advice and consent to use his process. Thank you for watching, and as always, thank you for checking in.